Hello and welcome back to the second part of the polymorphic lambda calculus. In this video we're going to take a look at the computational power of this system. Since lambda 2 is an extension of the simply type lambda calculus, every construction and computation that can be done with simple types can be done as well in lambda 2. But if you remember we couldn't actually do all that much. The simply type lambda calculus defined exactly the extended polynomials, and in particular could not define recursion. With polymorphic types, we're going to be able to define primitive recursion for functions. Primitive recursive functions can be obtained from certain initial functions by a finite number of applications of composition and primitive recursion. Those initial functions are the constant function 0, the successor function, and projection. Primitive recursive functions are the functions that can be computed using only for loops, that is, loops in which the number of iterations is known ahead of time and fixed unlike a while loop which can go on forever. Primitive recursive functions form a strict subset of the mu recursive functions. Remember, mu recursive and Turing definable are equivalent, so lambda 2 is therefore not Turing complete, but it's quite close. The only missing part is general recursion, so loops which can run infinitely. In the first chapter of this course, we identified such general recursive functions with a subset of not normalizing lambda terms. They were exactly those terms that run into infinite reduction chains and don't have a better normal form. Lambda 2 extends the simply type lambda calculus, and in the same fashion, primitive recursive functions extend extended polynomials. From the extended polynomials, we already know how to construct type church numerals, constant functions, a function to compute the successor, and also projection and composition. What was not possible before was primitive recursion. Later, we're going to see a formal definition of primitive recursion, but for now, we're going to work with the following intuition. A primitive recursive function has a recursion anchor, so some f of 0, which is fixed, and a recursive case for n plus 1. Virtually every function you can think of, like addition, factorial, finding quotients, and remainders, and any polynomial is primitive recursive. To define primitive recursion, we need a new form of church numerals. The simply typed church numerals look like the following. The nth church numeral takes an f of type, alpha to alpha, and an x of type alpha, and applies the function f n times to x. Obviously, this term has the type alpha to alpha to alpha to alpha. It's important that x is of the same type as the one that the function f works on, and although this works quite well in the simply typed lambda calculus, we are still limited to church numerals that work on that specific type, in this case alpha that we defined beforehand. Since lambda 2 gives us polymorphic types, we can use those to define polymorphic church numerals that work on arbitrary types. In order to construct such a polymorphic church numeral, we just add a type abstraction over alpha in front of the church numeral term. Once again, we're going to use the symbol cn for the polymorphic church numerals, as we're not going to use the simply typed church numerals at all. This shouldn't lead to any confusion, or we're going to use just the numbers 1, 2, up to n, if that's clear from the context. Of course, we also need to add a type abstraction in the type of polymorphic church numerals. Since we're going to use this type quite a lot throughout the rest of the video, to make things a bit easier to read, we abbreviate it with the capital letter C. From this polymorphic church numeral, we could get simply typed church numerals depending on any type by applying a type to it. Before we can get to the definition of primitive recursion, we need to introduce a new construct that will help us in doing so. A pair of church numerals will be denoted in infix notation with angle brackets around the terms m and n. It is defined as a lambda term that takes a term z of type c to c to c, and returns z applied to m applied to n. So z takes two church numerals and returns a church numeral. The type of a pair is therefore c to c to c to c. We're going to abbreviate this type by simply calling it pair. Now, you may have seen pairs in various programming languages. When working with those pairs, there's usually two functions called first and second that, when applied to a pair, return the first or the second component of that pair. We can construct this too in lambda 2 for our pairs of church numerals. The term first takes a pair p and applies it to lambda x, lambda y dot x. The term second applies p to lambda x, lambda y dot y. 
Let's apply these to a pair of M and N to confirm their functionality. The better reductions for these two terms are, apart from the last step, identical. In the first reduction step, the pair red X is reduced and P is substituted by the pair of M and N. Next, we replace the infix notation of the pair by the term and reduce the Z red X. Now we have the term lambda x, lambda y dot x, respectively y applied to the two terms m and n. The first term returns the first of its arguments, x, while the second returns the second argument, y. So, as we can see, first applied to a pair reduces to the first component of the pair, while second applied to a pair reduces to the second component. We are now going to discover how we can use this notion of a pair and its components to compute the primitive recursive factorial function. In the untapped lambda calculus, we constructed factorial by implementing recursion through self-application or the use of a fixed point combinator. In lambda 2, there is no self-application possible, nor is there a fixed point combinator, so we have to do two things slightly differently. Factorial of n is defined as 1 if n is 0 and n times factorial of n minus 1 otherwise. Written as a primitive recursive function, we get the recursion anchor we get the recursion anchor fact 0 equals 1 and recursive case fact n plus 1 equals n plus 1 times factorial of n. The idea now is to simulate recursion by constructing a function that given a pair of church numerals n and factorial n returns the next pair, n plus 1, and factorial of n plus 1. Fittingly, we're going to call this function next. And starting from the base case, applying that function next n times should give us the factorial of n in the second component. This only works for primitive recursive functions, since only with those we have a fixed number of recursive calls. So we need to define the base case fact c0, which equals c1, and the recursive case fact of the successor of cn, which is the second component of next applied to cn and fact of cn. Now, we only need to construct the term next. First off, the term should be dependent on a pair p. The return should again be a pair, with the first component being n plus 1 and the second component factorial of n plus 1. The implementation of the first component is fairly easy. Take n, which is the first component of the input pair p and then just apply the successor function to it. For the second component, we need to multiply that successor n plus 1 with the factorial of n, which is the second component of p. The term takes a pair and returns a pair, so its type is pair to pair. Now, the pair of 0 and factorial of 0 is just the pair of 0 and 1 per definition. The pair of 1 and factorial of 1 can be computed by computing the next pair of 0 and 1 and the pair of 2 and fact of 2 is the next of pair of 1 and fact of 1, which is in the end next applied 2 times to pair of 0 and 1. And we can actually observe that this always works. The pair of n and factorial of n can be computed by applying next n times to the pair of 0 and 1, which is the recursion anchor. So this is how we can compute the factorial of a church numeral. But it's not a term that on input n returns factorial of n. So now we start with a church numeral and want to apply something to it. What we need is the second component of next applied n times to the pair of 0 and 1. That is factorial of n. So applying next n times to the pair of 0 and 1 gives us the pair consisting of n and the wanted factorial of n. We know how to apply a function n times in a row to a fixed term. This is what the church numeral does. So we should try to apply the church numeral to the term next. As a quick reminder, a lambda 2 or polymorphic church numeral takes a type alpha, then a function f from alpha to alpha and a term x of type alpha and applies f n times to x. So we first need to pass the type that the function f and x will be working with. That type is pair. Then we pass the term next and lastly, the base case pair of 0 and 1. This will reduce to applying next n times to a pair of 0 and 1, which is, by definition, the pair n factorial of n. The factorial function then returns the second component of this term. So fact is defined as lambda n of type c, the input is the church numeral, dot 
second of n applied to the type pair and then applied to next and the base case pair of 0 and 1. We can take this approach and use it to construct primitive recursive functions in general. Every primitive recursive function has a base case that defines some value as f of 0 and a recursive case of f of n plus 1 that is defined as a function h depending on n and f of n. The general idea here is that in every recursive step of f, the parameter n decreases, so it's guaranteed to reach the base case and thus terminate at some point. It's also possible to have primitive recursive functions that take more than one parameter, but we're only going to look at the case with one parameter here. We can now use the definition of next from before and compute f similarly to how we computed the factorial function. Of course, we have to use the correct base here, and so we don't apply the pair 0, 1, but 0, a, with a being the result of the base case. And we have to adjust the recursive case, so we use the function h as the second component of the pair in the term next. Then the term f is defined just as the factorial term. We compute next n times applied to the base case pair, and then take the second component of that result. Now you might be wondering why we didn't use this construct in the simply typed lambda calculus. And the reason for that is that this construct is simply not possible with only simple types, because we need the polymorphic property of the church numerals. As the last topic for today, we're going to try and get an intuition as to why this is the case. So we're going to try the same construction, this time without polymorphism, and we're going to observe where it goes wrong. On the right side, you can see the polymorphic version of church numerals from lambda 2. And on the right side, you can see the polymorphic version of church numerals from lambda 2, and the recursive definition of fn applied to type pair applied to next and the base case pair. On the left side is the simply typed version, where we have to decide on a type alpha beforehand for the church numeral, and have no type application, so that it is missing in the recursive definition of f. The basic idea for primitive recursion was to use the nth church numeral and apply next n times to a pair holding 0 and the value of our primitive recursion. Assume we want to do this in the simply typed lambda calculus. Since we can't pass an arbitrary type for alpha to n, we need to set the alpha in all of our church numerals to the necessary type, so alpha has to be type pair. Now as you might remember, our definition of the pair type was built on the type for the church numeral c, and c itself was defined on top of the type alpha. So pair is c to c to c to c and c is defined as alpha to alpha to alpha to alpha. So alpha is pair, and inserting the definition of c into the definition of pair, we get this long type. So we have alpha is pair, which is c to c to c to c, and each c is alpha to alpha to alpha to alpha. As you can see, we have to define alpha by referring to itself. We would have to insert that long term for every alpha again and again. Self-referencing types is something that can't be done in the simply typed lambda calculus, or in any of the other systems that we're considering for that matter. So we can't compute primitive recursive functions like this in the simply typed lambda calculus. And we already know that we can't define any recursive functions in that system at all. So to wrap things up, the lambda 2 calculus added polymorphism by introducing terms depending on types. This system extends the simply typed lambda calculus and is powerful enough to compute the primitive recursive functions. But all terms in lambda 2 are still strongly normalizing, and it's not Turing complete. This means that there are some functions that we can't compute with lambda 2 terms, which are exactly those general recursive functions which are not primitive recursive. One example for such a function, which you might have seen already, is the Ackermann function. But this lack of general recursion isn't actually such a big disadvantage. As we mentioned in the introduction of primitive recursive functions, almost every program you can think of is primitive recursive, so lambda 2 is actually more than sufficient to construct most used functions. In the two-type system that we've looked at so far, we've always worked on constructing more complex terms. We had terms depending on input terms instead of just constant terms, and with polymorphism we added terms depending on some input type. In the next video we're going to look at two systems, lambda weak omega and lambda p which will add more complexity to the construction of types. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.